Is it recording? Yes. All right. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining Trundle Talks. Uh, today's episode, uh, we're calling it Scrum Masters Roundtable or Scrum Masters Assemble, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the whole idea today is to have a diverse panel where we are able to talk about our experiences as being a Scrum Master, our, uh, you know, our experience in the agile industry, and just tackle a couple of thoughts around what has been you know, going on in the industry, what are some of the current topics that are in discussion and your thoughts on it. I would like to officially welcome Ritika. Uh, Ritika works as a Scrum Master with Speechmatics. We have Anjuman who works as uh, a senior lead or coach with Samson. Uh, she has experience with Sun Life before this as well. And we have Dipanshu who works as a Scrum Master with Optimized Read Technology. Uh, thank you guys for joining in. Thanks, Ajit. Awesome, so without any... Uh, further ado, uh, let me just start by asking uh, the first question is, what do you guys feel a Scrum Master school responsibility is? Or what does it mean to you when I say that you are a Scrum Master? Let's, let's start with you, Ritika. Yeah, very interesting question. And to be very honest, if you ask me, I cannot define what it feels for me or what it is. Uh, being a scrum master in a word or in a sentence, but to sum it all up, I think for me, it is to create the kind of environment where the teams and organizations can grow as per their mission, vision, deliverables, whatever it is. And basically it is to observe and, you know, listen carefully to what the needs are and then help them achieve that. So grow that mindset into them, not do not focus on a process or one framework but try to understand what the need is and then go with the flow and help the teams and organization. So, yeah, sure. basically that. Thanks, Ritika. Uh, Dipanshu. Uh, for me, Scrum, being a Scrum Master means to promote Scrum in my organization as well as outside. So even this discussion that we are having right now is one of the means to contribute to the Agile and the Scrum community. Everyone who will be watching this session uh, will definitely be getting some inputs and values into Agile and Scrum. Uh, okay. When it comes to my role within the organization, it means to promote the Scrum uh, process, to uh, facilitate all the events and to help and coach the team. Sure. Perfect. Uh, Anjuman. So uh, to me, Scrum Master role is of a great responsibility. It requires a lot of commitment, system knowledge. It's a very crucial role. Uh, Scrum Master has to wear various hats during various points. Uh, he or she uh, should act as a strong bond between the team. In case there are any can conflicts, he should act as a gum to bind the team together again. At some point, he or she should act as a blocker wrestler in case there are any blockers or impedance in uh, moving towards the sprint goal he or she, she should be able to resolve them sure. and another and i think they should be moving towards the self organizing team and helping the organization to achieve their sprints goal yeah i i really agree with all of you and i uh, appreciate that you use the word responsibility there most of you use the word responsibility and help that's what i'm going to pick And my, my question to you is a lot of scrum masters, even I, for example, in the past, when I was working with a couple of organizations have not been limited to my role of a scrum master, right? So there was pressure and there was direction from the leadership that a scrum master is more or less a dual role. In theory, when we read the scrum guide, it officially says that it's, you're responsible for promoting and supporting scrum. You're you know, responsible for helping everyone understand the theory, practices, rules, and the values that Scrum Guide suggests. But more often than not, most of you and I as well, and a lot of our colleagues who work in the industry, end up playing that dual role as either a consultant, they have some other skill that they have to, you know, showcase as part of their journey. Have you guys faced similar situations where you were asked to not just work as a Scrum Master, but contribute as something else, maybe 
as a developer, maybe as a BA, maybe as a product owner at times as well. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, to be very honest, I have not experienced anything like that. Like, obviously, I am not sure what if by consultant or SME you only mean something other than Scrum Master. But for sure, I 100% agree to it that Scrum Master is not just related to, you know, sharing the value of Scrum or is not just limited to their own team or the other teams. And their role is much more wider than that. Because as I said, Scrum Masters are agile coaches and their, their primary responsibility is to see all the teams understand the overall organization and then go to forward it. And again, I, I, it's, it's a very controversial uh, statement, but there, there is the talk going on about this thing that scrum master should not be called scrum masters, you know, because it's not just scrum. We need to understand XP, Kanban, scrum ban, lean, say, we are there to promote everything which comes under agile. So, that's it. But I've never experienced where I've been asked to work as a developer or BA or product owner. So that's yeah. that's really fortunate for you, Ritika. I mean, we have we have one purist in the group, <laughs> which which I'm really happy about. But uh, like answering your question, not answering, but actually just adding on to the thought you just mentioned around. So you're suggesting that a Scrum Master is ideally responsible for whatever agile journey the organization is on. So you consider. Scrum master has more of a responsibility than a role. Exactly. I mean, what, now also, you know, everything depends. Everything depends on an agile world. It depends in which situation you are in. It depends on for what kind of organization you are working in. It depends on for what kind of role you are hired for. So it really just depends. So I feel, you know, when you're working for an organization and they don't, they're just in the initial phase and you're going through the transformation, I think if they hire you as a scrum master, it's really your responsibility to observe everything and then probably help them to come up with a framework and not just go with scrum because that's not, that might not be the thing fitting the organization. Sure. So, yeah. Sure. What are your guys, what, what are your thoughts on it, Anjuman, Dipanchu? Uh, so, so I have been... Yeah, yeah go ahead. Dibha. <laughs> Okay, so I strongly opine that uh, if done appropriately, Scrum Master role is a bigger responsibility. As we have already discussed, Ritika has also highlighted. So if a person has to play multiple role, consultant, SME, or and Scrum Master, so I think we're not doing justice to any of the role. Scrum Master is, requires different skill set, while consultant and SMEs require different skill set. So so if an organization asks a person to do that, they are playing with the mindset of that person. So I think that should be stopped. And Scrum Master it itself requires a lot of thinking, a lot of brainstorming. It's a bigger responsibility. So it should not be mixed and it should be stopped right away. Sure. So I have always been in a dual role. Uh, earlier, I used to be a business analyst as well as Scrum, uh, scrum Master and nowadays I act as a product owner and the Scrum Master. And yes, in the uh, ideal world, uh, a product owner can never be a Scrum Master, but uh, you have to do things in a different way. And Scrum is all about adapting and learning new things. So, Yes, uh, I am quite okay with uh, Scrum Masters playing dual roles because I have been doing it for so many years and I have not faced any issues or I have not felt that it is hampering my work in any way. And uh, regarding the role as consultant or SMEs, uh, I am assuming that you are uh, basically uh, trying to say that uh, they act as a consultant and SMEs for Agile or Scrum, right? It can be anything. So, but okay, even so, if that is the case, I'm sorry, the punch you. Even yeah, if yeah. that is the case, uh, they are agile coaches and not consultants. Consultants are there to tell you solution, and coaches are there to lead you to the solution. Yeah. So, so I, I am I, for for the sake of this conversation, uh, let's let's define consultant as a as a separate individual who might be consulting other teams, not coaching, consulting other teams on separate individual life. You can be an Atlassian Tools consultant. 
you can be uh, you know something related to your field of work but not doing scrum so like for example i i worked as a scrum master for x teams and for y teams i was an atlassian tools consultant and i have done the same thing and i am still doing the same thing so for me it's a daily job and i am quite enjoying it okay, okay. so uh it's more about go ahead go ahead anjuman so it's more about adaptation you want to say dipanchu yes, <laughs> since yes, we are yes, not adapted exactly. to it so we <laughs> think it's a little difficult <laughs> I, I i would like to i would like to highlight one point so dipanshu you said that's what scrum says right to be flexible but scrum is a defined guide agile it tells you to you know adapt scrum says yeah. no this is scrum it's a boxed thing this is scrum mm-hmm. so either you follow it or or you don't right so that's we'll we'll come back to that question when we go down a little in the list when we talk about scrum one and other values my uh, in the interest of time let me just move on and say and uh, and ask this question to you dipanchi you mentioned that you are serving as a role because the organization demands you to you're serving a dual role of a product owner and a scrum master now i've as a scrum master always had issues with my product owner because he would hand pick stories for hand picked individuals in my team which for me was against the basic rule of scrum right the team decides the work that they want to do but my product owner would say this story would go to this developer and he will do the testing or she will do the testing and he would hand pick the stories and would give you know uh, let's say lesser important stories like doing uh, analysis or doing requirement clarification to bunch of junior developers in the team and just give them you know so that they are busy till the time and and i felt very strongly against it how do you cope up with it being a scrum master and a product owner like you said that you don't have much problems with it does your team agree yeah so when it comes to this particular issue i have been a business analyst uh, for quite a lot of time so i come from that background that i used to have a different product owner and then i became a product owner so uh, uh, deciding uh, or assigning uh, stories to a particular team member is a big no for me and i have gone through that time so i know how the team feels so for me uh, the self organization or self sufficiency of the team is the most important aspect so uh, i am uh, very much uh, what we can say uh, focused on uh, doing that uh, on focused on not assigning a user story to a particular uh, team member and uh, one thing that i would like to emphasize is a product owner most of the time knows that which team member will be picking up a story so he actually does not need to uh, do that part uh, if you give the team a bit of a time the team will become self sufficient uh, automatically but okay. uh, you just need to give them a bit of time and everything goes fine i don't think it's automatically so much of work required by a scrum master there <laughs> yeah you need to but that is actually that is actually your job you are actually doing that yeah that's true yeah <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead, Ritika. I'm pretty sure you feel very strongly about this. <laughs> no, it's a, it's just it is is correct. Like obviously he has been he has played both the roles. So for him, it's really easy to understand that he this is not the right thing to do. But as you said, people might be facing this issue, and that's where scrum masters come and and we have to share the knowledge there and teach the principles and make sure that it's not happening and educate whoever needs to be educated for that and. and teams become self organizing of course so yeah uh, i have actually faced that issue myself for at least 4 or 5 years and then so, you learn so thank god we are at good yeah. good path <laughs> so i think that yes this is anti agile pact and this should be stopped so product owner cannot assign a user story to specific or to any user this is not his role the team should pick up their user story yes uh, at one time i faced this situation and i did all my best to make the team come out of that situation this is not product owner's responsibility as a scrum master we need to take a stand yes this is not your responsibility and you should not do it there might be some positive negatives to it but yes we should do it nice for betterment of whole team and 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 was it taken in a stride like how did your product owner respond to that 
yes there were few repulsion i have to face that but i was strong on that point because if it would not have stopped at the first point it will have great replication i would don't want it to get into that thing sure now any any further thoughts guys no, i think i i think more than more than obviously uh, scrum masters going and asking them not to that's the first step we have to do but i think the ideal position is to reach where team members themselves learn to say no to things which yes. which are said to be like you know which are, which are not correct so yeah. they should just say no you're not doing it and we will we know what we have to do and we'll pick up our stories so that's yeah. the ideal stage for which i totally yeah, agree that's ideal stage yeah but it has to have some initial point Obviously, as a scrum master we scrum have master. to take that lead and say no this is not the right practice exactly sure. okay uh my next question to guys is uh, one of the things which is getting fairly common and getting a lot of traction in the industry is a thing called scrum ban right where people are trying to move for scrum from scrum to kanban and using scrum ban as kind of the middle ground to take off to kanban mode uh it has been here for quite some time uh, a lot of people are defining it or a lot of people that i've spoken to in the last one and a half two years specifically when i started having more conversations around it have told me it means different for different individuals like for example i'll give you my personal example how i thought of scrum ban is my team works in an operational sort of model but we are not as mature that we can you know start working entirely in the model where uh, we can just assign stories and pick up from the backlog so we 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 started doing the activity of uh, as and when planning as when when you know things in to do started to go uh, you know reduce in number we would have a planning session pull out the next bunch of stories and then we would work in you know kanban mode but we would still have alternate days daily scrum and now that can be completely wrong that's just something which worked for one of the teams that i worked with how how do you guys uh, you know take scrum ban is it good do you guys feel it's a good uh, stage to be at when you're moving from scrum to kanban or is it something else altogether so sajit uh, my story is somewhat similar to yours so in sun life i was leading a operation team so i know that people come with a mindset that scrum has difficult rules while kanban is little easier to implement but uh, when they when we go for a scrum ban approach especially for the teams that has flexible task item or changing priorities that comes on very frequently so scrum ban helps a lot so if i talk about my scrum ban team it was like we were taking up all the ceremonies that scrum defines but we were flexible with the flows and the work items that were there yes yeah. there was limit to number of items in progress but uh, there was a flow anybody can take up any story basis the priority that has been defined by business and ceremonies were there as we have in scrum and that really helped we were able to improve the productivity in the sure. team uh, sure. for me it's a quite different situation and honestly i've just faced it like 2 to 3 months back so i'm handling a team uh, which like i'm in asr industry so there's so much of machine learning and all the research work which is going on in my team so we were having a lot of problem in coming up with a process where we can do research because it's really difficult to estimate research and story point research when you really don't know what is the requirement or what you are looking for like i cannot ask a researcher is like you have to tell me how many story points this research story is worth or actually breaking down research into smaller stories in chunk as well and that's how i think scrum ban is useful for us because uh, my team does research like product work and research work in parallel we are like four five people and it's all distributed within them so we still carry on all the uh, sprint planning and refinements and retros and stand ups everything but we deal with research and features separately within a team so it's a very good mixture of still working in sprint boundaries but not estimating the uh, research work but just having the stories ready after refining and it's working really well and we have a like whenever we need to make sure how we are going to deal with uh, story points and days 
So just make sure that half of the sprint will do research and half of the sprint just for the velocity calculation will do feature work. And that's how we are, we are able to accommodate both of them. And it's really working very well. So I think is Scrum Band bad or good? Again, it depends on what is your need. So nothing is good and bad in agile world unless and until you adapt it the way you want and it works best for you. So. Sure. Uh... Uh, I feel that uh, we cannot define Scrum Ban as good or bad because there are projects where Scrum works best, there are projects where Kanban works best, and then there are projects in which you can expect a large deal of changes to the stories and to the priorities. Uh, you have some uh, activities like maintenance and support activities. Uh, so you cannot uh, properly implement Scrum in those projects and you can also not implement Kanban in those projects. So if you have such kind of projects, then yes, Scrum Ban is the solution for you. But if you have a project where say if you, for example, I am managing a couple of products, I have the complete set of requirements. Okay. I know how I can define the stories. So in that case, I do not need Scrum Ban. Hmm. So if your project demands Scrum Ban is definitely good. Yes. Sure. Uh, but what do you guys think? Does it come to a scenario where Scrum Ban is used as an excuse to bring in anti-patterns that are harmful to the entire you know, concept of Agile? Have you guys Completely ever faced that? Agree. Completely agree. Yeah. I, have, I have been in a situation where people just want to do it because they don't want to get into estimation. They don't want yeah. to understand more. They're too afraid to commit. They're too yeah. afraid to commit without knowing uh, full requirements because we are all, all used to having our low level designs, HLDs, SCs, you know, explaining how it has to be done. So yeah. yes, I've seen that. And that's the real challenge, you know, to bring out people out of that mode and just tell them to at least try it. Like, like the only thing you can tell is just try it. It'll work out and we'll go wrong and no one is, you know, going to hold your collar for not completing what you committed. Yeah. So just give that knowledge. But nice. for sure, I have faced this so many times. Nice. Okay. Uh, so my next question to you guys is, uh, as, uh, as coaches and scrum masters, what is the most common impediment that you face uh, when you're trying to work with uh, any teams, be it, you know, in any industry that you've been working with? What is the most common impediment? Let's start with you. Anjuma. Sajit, you are holding the nerves now. <laughs> I, I have to make this one a little controversial, right? Because I'm one, I, I am one scrum master. <laughs> so as I told you, I was leading a team of uh, production support. So one of the impediment that I face on a regular basis was the change of priorities. So in production support, everything comes as a urgent and Everybody needs a solution right away there. So uh, this was one of the biggest challenge that I have faced. But uh, but with the experience and with the collaboration with the business partners and the client, we were able to resolve it. So what solution we actually implemented for it was uh, we had a, we had a reserved team placed for that particular uh, particular special or high prioritized item. In case there are no prioritize item crossing the fingers the cases are very rare so they will do the daily task else uh, they'll do the high priority items so that that's how we came up to the solution for that sure uh, Dipanshu uh, one of the most common challenges I used to face in initial time was uh, the team was not sticking up to the time box so we had stand-ups which used to say uh, range between even an hour. So that was in the initial time, but uh, then we uh, somehow in uh, say few months, we did uh, overcame that challenge. Uh, then there came a challenge where uh, say uh, one of the knowledgeable team member uh, <laughs> tried to dominate the Knowledgeable team, team member. <laughs> <laughs> So we have a, so suppose you have a very experienced team member who is also extremely efficient and then he or she may try to dominate the team. Hmm. So that is also one of the uh, challenges that 
even i faced and i have seen many of the scrum masters uh, facing that but uh, even that was uh, resolved after having multiple discussions with the entire team and with that particular uh, member so at the end discussions do help sure pratika and for me it's, it's a bit different whatever anjuman and uh, panchu said are really common in every scrum master does phase a change in priority and conflicts and leads coming in and playing their roles yes but for me i always think that the biggest impediments we face when we are implementing any framework is getting the buy in and making team understand why we are doing it that's the most important challenge once you have done that that impediment is resolved all these issues can easily be resolved because the team is with you and they know why you are doing it and that's so the resistance to thing. change right yes resistance yeah. to change because they don't know why we are doing it and mm. it's it's a very you know thin line how you how you pass the information so that's the biggest impediment how you resolve that once that's done and that's done in a neat and clean way i think all of the things will become simpler for you if not really easy so yeah 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 definitely and 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 i agree to all of your points and i the reason i was uh, i mentioned resistance to change is that's also something that i have faced and the main reason for that to happen is uh, that the organization did not consider the team worthy enough to share that information why are we doing this change right and it 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 ends up being boss ne kaha hai so we are doing it right not why what will it do for us or what will it do for our customers i think a lot of organization and we are you know definitely to be blamed for that as part of being the organizationally working with those teams we miss out on the opportunity to embed scrum as a value but we take scrum as a process and we try to instill a process yeah exactly yeah? true also awesome. i mean until uh, you have those values and yeah. we all know lisa adkins high performance tree right unless we inculcate those values those fruits and it's yeah. never going to happen you can't force people you need to have the buy in so yeah, yeah. okay uh, my next question is around uh, today is changing dynamics right so everybody is working from home scrum suggest close quarters team sitting together uh, sorry i think sorry sorry go ahead can can you hear me anjuman your screen got froze for a minute yeah i can hear you can you hear me we can see this is exactly my question how are you guys <laughs> dealing you with this <laughs> Yeah, Anjuman. <laughs> This is exactly my question. So Scrum suggests that you sit together, work together, and you give and you give your best, be productive. But this happens, and I'm going to not edit this out because this happens, and this is reality, <laughs> right? This is what happens yeah. when you're working with a call, when you are on a retro call, when you're on a planning call. Internet gives out, and that's the world we live in right now. It's so unpredictable. We don't know what's going to happen if. like in the afternoon there was a thunderstorm in gurgaon and i was not sure if i would have recurring internet connection if the electricity goes how long will my power backup go on so i can i even have this meeting in the evening right so it's always that uncertainty now how are you guys as scrum masters dealing with this and how are you you know helping your teams to get over this boundary uh, ritika let's start from you okay so for me like uh, it's good for us that microsoft uh, has a good teams network and we all can just jump into meetings whenever required and uh, when i started working it's very interesting because i started working for speechmatics in jan and in march we all, everything went remote so after joining a new organization i was only there in office for two months and in that too i was in india for the conference agility today for like two weeks so it was very less time i got to work there but it was interesting so, because when so i came Ritika, back I, I, <laughs> at least you got two months i yeah. joined virtually my new organization wow. that, that was that, very different <laughs> experience <laughs> yeah so that's what i did like i i uh, started having one to one catch ups with all my team members to understand them personally then we started catch ups with all the other teams to you know make sure that there's a personal bond and people don't 
feel awkward calling the other person any time because as you said when we all are sitting at the same place and you have doubts you can just ask but when you're working from your home you will not know what the other person is really doing and you might feel a little laid back or, con- or awkward to call the person directly so we just you know every time on calls in every meetings all the scrum masters and our engineering managers and everyone we just stop uh, asked our team members to do so whenever required and and we were there whenever they needed it and then obviously all the games we have you know online games and having good tools for retrospectives and things which might help and i think it's really working fine for us as of now and teams are more productive actually that's what we feel so nice. yeah going good uh dipanchu uh for us uh, actually the remote work is not new uh at optimized we have always been promoting remote work but earlier it used to be say half of the team may be doing remote work and half of the team was at least present in the office but with the new dynamics we all are sitting in the uh, home and uh, we do not have issues in at least our day to day actions or tasks uh, like uh, we have always made it a priority to uh, uh, have seamless communication within the team so any team member can uh, directly call any other team member if he or she feels to have a discussion and the discussion can be on anything even on some personal topics so we had made it sure that communication uh, is a top most priority thing so that was sorted out but then we have new kind of uh, problems like recently one of the developer was facing an issue that uh, his system Uh, which was present in uh, our office uh, shut down due to some issue and then the office boy was not able to <laughs> boot it up so the team member had to actually uh, visit office ultimately because uh, the validation has to be had to be done within a couple of days so uh, to resolve this issue now we have decided that we would be uh, getting a new server on aws uh we used to have jira on our server uh, on our own premises uh, we have just moved it to jira cloud so yes we are facing new uh, challenges with each new day but uh, we are also learning with each new day interesting so sajit i would say that uh, in this new form of working scrum master plays a greater role there so they need to be little more patient they need to they do trust but they need to trust more their team and they have to be transparent so they should lead by an example for example if i am a scrum master if i am going on a break i need to feed my son right so if i speak it loud in the communication i am going for a break i need to feed my son so team will obviously take it and they'll also speak loud for all these things and network fluctuation and everything is very common these days and we we should be human enough to accept that and the team in other other members in the team are also human we should accept that it should be like human to human interaction rather than yeah. scrum master to a team member and we should learn to be more patient i think that would help yeah yeah definitely agreed uh, with you anjuman uh, for for on that just factor the the human to human interaction i think that is something which you know which which can be the only thing that we can gain out from this pandemic if we are sitting at home the importance of human to human interaction you know how <laughs> how how work from home used to be a benefit and now it's a requirement and nobody can wait to go to office and have that machine wala coffee i think that's, <laughs> that's just the yeah what I, have that that's true those little tea breaks coffee breaks lunch breaks you know that's it's it's really difficult for some some guys who live alone so yeah yes, yes. so but ritika uh, we we had virtual coffee break and virtual lunch and they were very good believe me i really yeah. enjoyed them we also have an ongoing uh, coffee thing which is and people okay. go and join it but i still think that and especially because it is about scrum masters and thing i personally feel that my job has become a bit difficult because i am not with my team i am not in organization i don't get that opportunity to listen and to observe what is going on around me which is a very very important part of my job to mm-hmm. you know it revolves around how people are behaving around me and everything we are in meetings that's fine but it's i 
it's a bit difficult to explain but that overall organizational vibe it's very yeah. i'm i'm missing it so it, it is a bit difficult on that front managing a team and everything yes but on that front i think it's a bit difficult it is it definitely is i mean uh, a, a human to human interaction cannot be uh, compensated for a zoom call right you cannot yeah you cannot yeah. understand what's going on and the the vibe the word that you use yeah that's definitely something which gets uh, to be an issue cool uh, i think that's that's the most of the questions that i had for uh, you guys it was an amazing discussion uh, thank you ritika thank you anjuman thank you dipanchu thank for you. joining in today i loved having the discussions uh, any closing thoughts that you guys might want to have you know want to share before i you? enjoyed it thank you sarath for inviting me thank you anjuman yeah i enjoyed it too and i'll just say keep spreading agile love and agile knowledge Ooh. that's all we have to do so let's let's get a t-shirt built with that slogan <laughs> ritika yeah <laughs> let's do it so <laughs> let the pandemic get over i'll reach out to my marketing team and we'll get a t-shirt made for that scrum master for life with a subtitle with what you just said <laughs> Well, awesome. I can't pay for that. <laughs> awesome discussion, guys. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Dipanchu. Uh, stay safe, guys. Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, take care. Take care, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.